pray for you already in the name of jesus christ may the grace that lifts may the grace that announces let it rest upon you now let it rest upon you now let it rest upon you now you are welcome to believers global tv beloved in christ i implore you not to miss this important message you are about to listen to it is not by accident that you are here on this channel right now I strongly believe that there is something God is about to do in your life through this teaching and that is why I encourage you to listen to the end. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Today is a day of divine favor and testimony. Stay to the end. Don't go away. God bless you. What things soever ye desire, when you pray, so your desire connects to prayer, connects to believing, connects to receiving, connects to having. This is how the Bible teaches. Desire, prayer, believing, receiving, having. You can never have what you have not received. You only have what you have received because receiving is a spiritual reality. Having is when that reality that you have received is now made manifest what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that means if you want to be a person of faith exploits by faith you cannot divorce your exploits of faith and by faith to the ministry of prayer please walk with me and let's go to the book of james james chapter 5 very profound scripture a nice discourse on prayer was done right from chapter 13 and it stretches down to about 18 19 but for the sake of time we'll just pick a few scriptures very quickly so the bible says in verse 13 is any among you afflicted it says let him pray is any merry let him sing psalms uh-huh 14. it says is any sick among you lend me your attention now let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him so he's saying that there is a kind of prayer that can be said over the afflicted even the sick anointing him with oil in the name of the lord let's shout verse 15 together if you're a christian ready one to read and the prayer of faith hold on please hold on please hold on please the fact that he specified the kind of prayer meant not every kind of prayer produces the, eff the effect desired. He said the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord in honor to that prayer of faith shall raise him up. I like this one. You don't have to be sick to be raised up. Once you are down, you need to be raised up. The prayer of faith does not just heal the sick. It can raise any man up. And if he had committed sins, he said, they shall be forgiven him. Hallelujah. The prayer of faith. The prayer of faith. So the Bible also tells us in James chapter 4. Let's look at it, please. There is something called praying amiss. Have you stumbled across that in scripture? That an individual can pray but he will pray amiss. That was the challenge of Jesus' disciples. I told you yesterday that there are many questions the disciples asked Jesus, but two of them are outstanding. Number one, teach us to pray. Number two, increase our faith. They confronted Jesus head on with these questions. And the disciples were frustrated. Their issue was not prayerlessness. Their issue was inefficiency in prayer. They noticed that there was a way Jesus prayed over sick people. There was a way he prayed over situations and circumstances. There was a, a, a way he prayed over the issues of concern at the time. And they saw the results that followed immediately. And they attempted to pray in like manner and nothing happened. So they came with humility and said, please teach us to pray as John taught his disciples to pray. Then Jesus began to do a discourse on prayer. James now is teaching us that a believer can be prayerful and yet your prayer can be impotent 
and the reason why the prayer of the believer becomes impotent is because the believer can be prayerful but that there is a possibility that that believer can pray amiss are we learning from whence cometh wars and fighting among you come they not thence even from your lusts that war in your members verse 2 ye lost and have not ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain ye fight and war ye have not because you ask not you know what james is saying here he's saying all the bitterness and jealousy the fighting and the quarreling are unnecessary because the prayer platform is an equalizer it gives everybody an opportunity to have their desires met that means coveting another person's reality or testimony and getting angry about it is unnecessary that there is a provision in the spirit where anything you desire can become yours so he's saying you fight and you quarrel you ask and then you receive not did you ever read that it's possible to ask and yet will not receive he says because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your loss very quickly what makes prayer a prayer that is amiss i just want to talk about that very quickly number one the first thing that makes prayer amiss is praying without the backing of scripture praying without the backing of scripture is praying amiss sociological emotional lamentation is not prayer praying outside of the backing of scripture is praying amiss are we together because like you were taught yesterday Genesis chapter 21 and verse 1. God does not do what we want. He only does what he says. So when you align what you want to what he says, it will look like God is answering you. But God is honoring himself. Are we together now? And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. If God has not spoken, are we together now? The modus operandi of the kingdom does not allow that God does what he did not say. So God's word precedes his action. Genesis chapter 1. The Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was void, formless, and darkness hovered around the face of the deep. Then the Bible says, verse 3, And Elohim said, And God said light be and the bible says there was light and he saw that it was good so that's always the protocol god says it and then he does it god says it and then it is made manifest so praying amiss is praying without scriptural backing this is very profound most people assume that just because they are talking to god and they mean what they are saying God is obliged to answer them. That does not work that way. Hallelujah. There are many, many people who prayed in the Bible and their prayers were not answered. Once you do not back your prayer with the word, you do not back your prayer with scripture, you are praying amiss. Number two, what makes prayer praying amiss? Any desire that violates the way the kingdom operates will not be answered. Humorously, sometimes when I teach on this, I talk about people praying that God destroys um, his enemies. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Before you pray that prayer, verify who is God's enemy. Do you know who God's enemy is? God's enemy is not the person you hate. God's enemy is not the person you don't like. God's enemy is anybody who makes himself a consistent interruption to God's program even if that is you so when you pray and say let God arise and let all his enemies it is possible to be in that list you doubt me ask Jonah the fact that you fight the will of God 
even if it's for that moment makes you his enemy anything that is anti-christ is god's enemy anything not anyone anything are we together so when you pray with a motif that is wrong that was the singular reason based on my study and in my opinion why the prayer of hannah was not answered the goal was not having a child that fulfills the purposes of god the goal was a competition trying to have just like penina and it was not enough for heaven to move on our behalf so the issue was not having a child the issue was wanting to feel like a woman just like penina because of the mockery you would think god would be moved by her tears and the years kept multiplying and it looked like heaven was silent one day she changed her motif paraphrasing lord you are looking for a prophet let my womb produce one she prayed once not twice once and the child came so when you come to god and say lord i want money i want ministry i want anointing i want this there is one question heaven will echo back to you why if you cannot answer that question why you will not get an answer from heaven because everything created by God was designed to serve his purposes. Everything created by God, everything that secures God's attention and support must serve his purposes. Are we together? So praying amiss, number one, without scriptural backing. Number two, with a corrupted motive. Corrupted motive. And then finally, number three, what makes prayer? amiss praying without faith that means without the willingness to obey god there are many things god mandates that we do to commit him but most believers will prefer to go through the sacrifice the burden of shouting over heaven than to take that action of faith for instance there is no amount of prayer that will substitute for obedience there is no amount of prayer that will substitute for obedience. If God gives you an instruction and say, bring you a seed to your father in the Lord. And you say, Lord, rather than giving him the seed, let me fast for two days. You will fast and it's just your spiritual life that will improve. But that result you want to get, you will not get it. Obedience indeed is better than sacrifice. There are many, many believers who prefer to pray in replacement to obedience and the reason is because uh in prayer you just dissipate energy but obedience many times will cost you it will cost you to part away with physical things hallelujah the bible says they heard the word just like we did but the word did not profit them not be mixed with faith can i tell you one of the major assignments of prayer is to help you know the will of God the moment the will of God is known you obtain grace to walk in keeping with the conditions that commit God once your part is not played you render the word impotent hallelujah for instance the Bible talks about diligence as a requirement for greatness if you pray with a commitment to remain lazy you are not going to have the prayer answered at best god will show you through dreams and visions that laziness is why you are there are we together now yeah prayer was not supposed to replace the various responsibility components that commit the believer as far as getting promises manifest i think it's a mistake that is done in church there are many people who perpetually live walk in disobedience and expect that just because they prayed it will automatically make that happen the bible says he that wants friends must show himself friendly if you're somebody who disregards people you have a lot of disdain for people pray the favor prayer you can as far as that will concern the answer will remain in the realm of the spirit because the human components that need to partner with the spirit of god you have ignored them and dishonor is the key that shuts any door are we together so when you pray outside of the provisions that scripture allows you are praying amiss 
number two when your motif is corrupted just to satisfy your lust there is no kingdom come contained in your desire there is no kingdom come there is nothing in your desire that glorifies jesus there is nothing in your desire that gives him praise there is nothing in your desire that sings his praises to the nations you will not secure answer from heaven and number three if you are praying without a commitment to obeying god or obeying the instructions that will come from that prayer there are many 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 people whose prayer remains important because it's a waste for the holy spirit to instruct them in the place of prayer because when god tells them the things to do they would not do it whatsoever he tells you to do john chapter 2 he says to do having the readiness to judge all disobedience he says when your obedience is complete are we learning now so this is very powerful i watch believers sincere believers who love the lord pray dissipating zeal and energy and you can see the mistakes that are made in prayer and sometimes i'm moved with so much compassion because i know that these people are praying with zeal albeit without knowledge what makes your activities in the spirit powerful is the understanding that supports what you are doing the difference between giving and do as donation and giving as a spiritual commitment that brings you a harvest of increase is understanding not just the seed when you carry a donation mentality there's no reward the reward is that people will have a good perception about you that they saw you dropping a seed but it will not reach heaven are we together so understanding is what gives strength to our spiritual activities you can dance just as a show and yet lose out on an opportunity to receive the blessings that come from such a powerful spiritual practice you can sing and it's just entertainment for you are we together now what gives life to the spiritual activities that we engage in is the understanding that supports what we're doing so before you act it's important that you educate yourself why am i doing this what is the revelation behind the things i'm doing i'm locking myself in the room and i am dancing before the lord what does this mean what blessing is connected to this obedience are we together i'm now emptying my account to bring my seed to church are you just doing it because you are frustrated or are you doing it because you have an understanding that no man outgives god hallelujah understanding is powerful jesus said i will build my church upon this formula that you have to understand first before you act who do men say that i am and they said you are this and that and he said this is ignorance but what do you say and peter said i know who thou art thou art christ even the son of the living god understanding understanding it is the reason why two people can come and drop the same seed the same amount under the same condition and even receive prophetic blessings from the man of god one will go and return with testimonies another person will return as if he never came to church oftentimes the difference is not the anointing that came upon them not the size of the seed necessarily but the understanding that supported what they did hallelujah praying amiss i'm praying for you that from today may your prayer produce power shout a louder amen may your prayer produce power thank you for staying to the end of this message but before you leave i want to tell you a story there was a father who has two sons and so he sent two of his sons to the farm like to go and harvest yam so he called them both and sent them the elderly one says he is going to go that he is going to like go on the errands but the younger one says he's not going to go and so they left the presence of the man and behold the one that says he will go to the farm does not actually went but the one who says he was not going to go at a point he thought within himself and said 
my father has been very responsible for me, so I will go. So he changed his mind and went. So I want to ask, among these two sons, who actually does the will of the father? It is the younger one. So as you have listened to this message, it's not about listening alone. If you're listening, and probably you feel stirred up. But later on, the zeal, the passion that you had when you were listening to this message dies, and you do not apply this message, it means the time that you dedicated listening to them, to this message was a waste so it is not about what you share alone it's not about the messages that you listen to alone it is more of what you take out of the, those messages and then apply to your daily lives to make you um better so i do hope and i pray that this message will transform your life will turn your life around.